trading account history. The platform provides full access to the trading history of an account as well as various tools for analyzing it. Open the history tab within the toolbox window. So this is pretty straightforward. You have the history tab, which is the third tab within the toolbox at the bottom of MetaTrader 5 here. So you can see the history tab. So if, for example, you can see the different tabs. So this is going to be pretty important as you're placing trades, as you're using the platform. It's very important for you to have a, a record of what you're doing. So if you ever have any questions about a specific transaction, you have a way of going about and looking at history to find that transaction to make sure it occurred. So what you're going to want to do Let's go over a couple columns within the history tab just to give you a basic understanding of what, uh, what these columns represent. You have the time column here, which uh, basically will represent a deal execution time. The record is going to be represented as in year, month, day, hour, and minute, as you can see here, the format. Then you have your deal column, which is the ticket number, a unique identifier of a deal. You also have your ID column, which the deal ID is a, an external trading system. You also have your order column here, which is a ticket number, again, another unique identifier of the order uh, based on which the deal was executed. You have your symbol column, pretty straightforward, um, common sense, it's just basically an abbreviation of the, of the symbol that you're trading. So in this case, uh, we're using the CQG data feed to integrate into MetaTrader 5. Uh, as you can see, the symbol map is a bit different than the traditional exchange symbols, but that's Mini Russell, for example. Another cool thing is if you hover your mouse cursor, Whenever in doubt, if you're not sure what the symbol is, just hover your mouse cursor, you'll see that little tooltip, and it will tell you exactly what the symbol is. In that case, mini NASDAQ, December 2016. All right, then you also have your type column, which is the trading operation type, whether it's a buy or a sell. Then you have the direction. So in this case, was it an entry order or was it an exit? So you can see in, you can see out. The volume, how many contracts you executed. So these were all one lots the price in which the, the order was executed at, so 48 half, 48.74.75. You have the commission column, which is going to represent commissions paid. I don't have that uh, built into the demo account at the moment, so there's no values there. Swap is morally in relation to Forex, so we'll disregard since uh, we're looking at futures data. Then you also have the profit column. Right, the profit column basically is the financial result of the position exiting. For entry trades, the zero profit is shown. All right, so going back to the direction, you can see here these are entries, and that's an exit. So if you notice these three columns here, there's no profit value because when you enter the trade, it's unrealized profit. So once you close out the trade, it then becomes realized profit. So therefore, you're going to have yourself an actual P&L. So in this case, you can see we closed out the trade here, and that's why you see a P&L field of $950 positive. All right, so that's pretty much the columns that are represented. You also have your comment column. So the comment column which I explained in earlier videos, if you place an order, there's a comment field. Let me show you real quick what it looks like in this case right there. So if you included a comment when you executed the trade, it would be displayed in the comment field here, which is pretty convenient. All right, another thing as well is you have different ways to show a representation of how the information is shown in the history tab. So the trading history can be presented in, in various forms. It can either be listed in orders containing all trade requests sent to a broker, so in this case, you see orders here. If I right-click in the, the actual history tab, you'll see the context menu. You'll see these three options at the top, deals, orders, orders, and deals. So if I click on orders, this is going to contain all trade requests sent to a broker. All right, now if I change this to, to say deals only, all right, that's only going to show the actual purchase and sale transactions executed based on orders. Now if I choose orders and deals, this will then give me a tree view of all trading operations showing how the trade requests were processed. All right, so it's all personal preference on how you want this displayed within your history tab. The main thing is understanding where to go to change it. So you're going to right-click, context menu, either deals, orders, orders, and deals. For now, I'm just going to look at deals, keep it straightforward, so I just see all the transactions in terms of execution. All right, another thing here, uh, we'll go over a couple more other things here in the context menu. A lot of this is very straightforward. So if you're not interested in, in seeing the history for all contracts traded, so I've traded a combination of different markets. You can see many S&P mini NASDAQ, mini Russell, 30-year bonds, mini Dow, and the euro, and so forth. So right now it's showing every transaction from everything that I've traded uh, since I started using the demo account. Now, if I'm only interested in just looking at one market, all you would need to do is just select that specific market. So in this case, if I'm only interested in seeing the history for the mini S&P, then just left-click, and now it's only going to show me mini S&P. If it, you could see, only mini S&P. All right, so that's pretty much you go to symbols. You'll see the subcontext menu, the context menu itself, and just go to all symbols if you want to see everything. So you can see many NASDAQ, Euro, and so forth. 
Now you also have volume. So this is a uh, amount. So I'll have to double check on what that means. If I had to guess, that's probably if in Forex you can trade lot increments. You can trade micro lots, which is 1K, I believe, mini lots, 10K, standard lots, 100K. So if you were to execute, let's say, two mini contracts, but you, you execute it as separate transactions, so 10K and 10K, technically to, together that total amount would be 20K. But in futures, it really doesn't apply because you're just executing individual contracts. Or if you're executing a one lot, you're executing a one lot. If you're executing a five lot, you're executing a five lot. So you can see here, as I'm executing, there's a five lot, there's a three lot, there's a two lot. So I would probably say that if you're trading futures, it would probably make sense to keep that on lots, in my opinion. I'll double check to see what that amount represents. Another thing as well is if the report, uh, if let's say, for example, if there's too much information in the history tab. You only want to see a certain data range. You know, for example, you've been trading the last two years, and you don't want to scroll through two years of historical data to find what you've done in the last week. So what you could do is you can allocate by choosing a data range of history. You can either use last three months, last month, or you can go to custom period here. So if you left click, you can see now I can choose calendar date from and to, and it's as simple as it gets. Just be sure to change from and to the actual dates. Once you do that, it will then show the history based on that uh, particular data range that you set. And then pretty much, and this is pretty cool, the report option. This allows you to export the data in the history tab to an Excel file. Uh, perhaps you want to save it onto your hard drive and store it for future reference. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. So just click on report, open XML file. If you have Microsoft Excel, what will happen is it will open up Microsoft Excel, export the data, just file, save as, and it will save it, save it to wherever you want to save it on your hard drive, and it will be saved. And for the most part, the rest of the information is pretty straightforward. The columns column, you, you're pretty much only going to have five options, ID, commission, swap, comment. Those are the only options that you can actually remove. The rest of the stuff there is there by default because uh, it's fairly important. So uh, the, the rest of it is all personal preference, like ID, commission, swap, and comment. Uh, for the most part, I leave it all checked. This is my preference. But if you don't want, you know, for example, swap, that might be a good one to, to remove since this is not a Forex platform. In, in terms of what we're demonstrating. So if I click it, you see how that goes away? All right, so that's something you can do if you want to organize it to your, to your preference. Another thing as well, if you notice in every column, there's going to be, if you click on the header title of the column itself, you can organize the order of appearance. So right now, if I were to click right now with the arrow pointing up, it's showing from the, the, top, the top trade that you see here is going to be the, the latest, or not the latest, but the furthest away. All right, so then if I scroll down all the way to the bottom, you can see it's most recent. Now, if you want the most recent to be on top, just click it again, and now you can see it's been allocated and changed to that order of appearance. And that works with every column. So if I click, 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 just look for those little arrows to have a, so you have an understanding of how it's organized. But for the most, time, most part, probably, you'd probably be doing that mostly with the time column uh, because you probably don't want to scroll down every time to see the, the most recent trade. It's just all personal preference again. But just giving you an understanding that you can change it just by simply clicking in the header title, and you can see there's a little arrow that will appear. And that's pretty much the history tab within MetaTrader 5. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about this, please contact our 24-hour support team. You can reach us at 312-893-6400, extension 1. Get to transfer over to our trade desk, uh, not trade desk, but help desk. We're here as long as the markets are open, 24 hours a day. Definitely stay up to date on our YouTube channel as well. We're always uh, proactive in showing you new content. You can reach us at www youtube.com forward slash AMP futures. Again, that's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP futures. Thank you very much for listening in and happy trading.